Wag Mobility Project. Today we're going to talk about some of the pieces of the hang power snatch. You know, when we're typically looking at uh, any hang power movement, what we're basically saying is, how do we overload the jumping mechanism, the hip extension mechanism of the athlete? Maybe if I just have to pull or clean, I can de-simplify it. The, I think Paulkin calls this a level four move kind of thing, where it's not super complicated enough to be, have to receive it with kind of challenges of flexibility. But, as a kind of a coach looking at these things, when I'm watching people jump, you know, one of the things we have to think about is I really have to keep my torso upright or at least stable because one of the things that happens, we see this fault all the time, so we're watching that. You know, if you watch Mike Bergner, working with Coach Mike Bergner, you know, chances are he's going to be talking about a real strong knee out position. And uh, once I cover, I mean, if I shouldn't cover like this necessarily, that puts me in the deadlift position, so it's probably straight down, knees out, and into a cover. What's really happened is that I'm in a strong jumping position and, you know, trying to get my torso up right so I can jump. So it's a vicious extension of the ground, to, coach, to quote Mike B, Coach B. So here's what we've got going on to think about, is that when we start to see people kind of working on this short range, big jump overhead, I just really have this limited hip extension to generate lots of force from. So the bits that tend to get tight and smoked are the knees, and especially if I have to control the back and use that hip flexor to kind of maintain rigid control of the pelvis. So what I tend to see is this is the kind of thing that ends up being jumper, uh, jumper's knee and smoking people. So here's what we're going to do today, work on kind of improving jumping mechanics or thinking about the, the mechanisms that get tight. One is the couch stretch, and that if you are insufficient in the hip to be able to kind of, whoa, come to full extension, you know, Yami was just talking about it across the journal, but if you're short at the hip and at the knee simultaneously, you're not going to be able to hit full extension, or you'll end up leaving it a little bit behind to give yourself some slack. So let's go ahead and start by winding ourselves up. Quick, easy two minutes here. Belly tight. Press forward. Really trying to hit full extension today. So I'm going to start by squeezing the butts, and it's the butt that drives the opening movement of the hip. Let's go ahead and camp out there. Contract, relax your brains out, and then take it a little bit further if you want to, but I really want to just keep squeezing the butt and trying to press tall. Squeeze the butt and try to press tall. And the goal is not to leave the hip behind, but to be in a range where I can work on bringing my hip through that 180 degrees, or at least back to full neutral. So squeeze your butt, come back to full neutral. Play with that. Don't leave that hip way behind. Even if that means you're way down here, squeezing the butt, pressing to full neutral, that's okay. So we're trying to open up that jumping mechanism. So that's homework number one. The second piece we don't think about when kind of knees jumping pieces is the calves. And the calves are really tight. And one of the reasons the calves are tight is that they have to control uh, that ankle, knee, whatever position. If you're turning the feet out a little bit, keeping the knees straight, turning out. But that gas rock is a big, powerful knee extensor here. So boom, number two, wind that thing up. Let's go foot up. Again, working on trying to bias kind of behind the knee, leg straight, press two, contract, five seconds, release, move in that new range for 10 seconds, trying to bring the hip to the wall or to the piece or whatever my, my stanchion here. Uh, ball the foot, wind up, camp out, go look in, your, uh, in those tight corners. If you don't have full range, you're not going to be able to jump effectively into that big powerful position. And then number three is making sure that that hip is located back in socket where I can get full mechanical advantage and take advantage of kind of glute hamstring relationship. So, I'm going to put my trusty band on. I'm going to distract that hip. Actually rotate just like that jumping position. I'm just going to bias over a little bit. Contract, relax if I can. Otherwise, I'm just going to press in. Try to really load the hip to the back of the socket in two minutes here. So, we've kind of got six minutes of leg, thinking about improving my jumping position. Once you hit this a bunch, when you press into that, you know, those different corners, even at some relative extension, come back up and see what it looks like side to side. Because once you just set that hip a little bit further back in the socket, you're going to realize that you have kind of a better mechanical advantage. This butt cheek feels like it's a lot better. It means I can keep my torso upright and I don't have to make so many compromises with my legs. So I can really keep my torso upright, powerful hip extension, without having to feel like I have to cover to be able to jump upright. That's how we're working on hang power snatch today. We'll see you guys tomorrow.